Welcome back. So, we shall continue with our discussions today. If you recall in the last lecture, what are, what are the things that we studied? We have covered already Fermi Dirac statistics, the probability of finding electron in a semiconductor. We also discussed density of states, that is how many states are available for electrons to occupy. Told you that you know the product of this density of states and Fermi function, that actually product represents how many electrons or holes will actually be there. We also introduced the concept of holes by the way, right. So, the last lecture was ended with uh, this discussion on intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductor and I told you, I gave you the expression for intrinsic semiconductor, we derived that expression actually for uh, a, a semiconductor, what is the intrinsic carrier concentration in a semiconductor which we can express in terms of band gap. It has a lot of actually implications for devices, we will come to see that, but we also told that today we shall also do, do some numericals and try to get simplification of the ideas of the P and N type doping that we studied, okay, how to apply in the numericals, how to actually understand real world problems. So, those are the things we will cover today and if time permits we will also go to things like uh, carrier mobility for example, which is very important later on, okay. So, let us come back to the last slide of where we had ended. If you recall, this was the slide that we ended, right. In the last, you know, I told you that there is an expression for intrinsic carrier concentration, which can be expressed in terms of band gap, right, exponentially in terms of band gap and also depends on NC and NV. If you recall, NC and NV are the conduction and valence band effective density of states, okay. Those numbers are very much temperature dependent, there is an expression for NC, there is an expression for NV. We know those expressions, they depend on temperature and effective mass, if you recall. Hmm. And this expression of NI was derived very nicely. I told you that an intrinsic semiconductor is a semiconductor where there are no impurities, okay, it is pristine and pure. So, in that case, there will always be some electrons and some holes in equal number in the semiconductor because of thermal energy. For example, in silicon, the intrinsic area concentration turns out to be 1.5 into 10 to the power 10 per centimeter cube of both electrons and holes at room temperature, okay. I told you that in intrinsic semiconductor, uh, N is equal to P, right that electrons and holes are equal in number and that is equal to N i. So, I multiplied N and P and I got this N i square and N and P can be expressed in terms of this, right, this particular terms and so, uh, we got this expression of N i, okay. So, if you recall now, I will come to the next page now, hmm, we will start from here. Uh, to make sure that we are not losing track of things, I will again reiterate that the number of electrons in a semiconductor for which is not very highly doped is given by N into N c exponential of E f minus E c by k t. This is going to be a very fundamental equation that we will always keep using and using, okay. So, I draw a conduction band and I draw, sorry, I draw a valence band. I told you that if you take a middle of line here, that is the intrinsic level E i that is always there. If your Fermi level is in the top half, say for example, your Fermi level is here E f, it means the semiconductor is n type doped or there are more electrons than holes and if your Fermi level is in the bottom half, then there are more holes than electrons, okay. It is P type dope that we know, right. So, I told you if a semiconductor is not very highly doped, then this equation holds true, okay. This equation holds true and this is very easy to actually see. NC is a constant, right. It depends on temperature and it depends on effective mass. It can be calculated or it will be provided in the question and it depends exponentially on the difference between E c and E f. You see this gap, negative of this gap, E f minus E c is the negative of this gap. So, if this gap becomes smaller and smaller, which means the Fermi level keeps coming closer and closer, if the Fermi level comes up like that I am giving in red color, then you will have more electrons because this gap reduces and if the gap reduces then this minus of that gap no, so this quantity will increase basically, so your doping becomes higher. One way to raise the Fermi level closer to the conduction band is to have more electrons, which means you dope it high. I told you right, there is N doping which means you are adding an pentavalent impurity sort of thing. So, you have more electrons than what you need, you know each atom will give one electron. So, if I for example, phosphorus is a dopant. So, if you add phosphorus atoms, then one phosphorus atom will give you one extra electron, okay. So, if I eat 10 to the power 10 or 10 to the power 15 phosphorus atoms, I will get 10 to the power 15 extra electrons. So, that is how I modulate the conductivity because I can change the number of carriers available in the semiconductor for carrying current, that is how we do it, okay. This equation is going to be very fundamental throughout now. So, let us not lose track of this equation. Similarly, for holes we have another equation P is equal to N V exponential of the negative of the gap here, you know. So, it is E V minus E F by K B T, okay. So, these two equations are going to be very fundamental. Uh, 
one very important thing to notice here is that these equations are valid when the doping is not very high and I told you doping not very high means that this pacing should be at least 3 kt or should be more than that ok. So, this space spacing should be 3 kt or more than that if it is not 3 kt or less than 3 kt then the Fermi level is too close to conduction band and this equation will not hold true then you have to use the actual Fermi integral ok. Most of the equations and situations in our life will revolve around moderate doping ok and that is why this equation will definitely hold true ok this equation will definitely hold true if it is a high doping effect we will see that this gap becomes very small and this equation is not holding true. Actually for an intrinsic semiconductor the Fermi level lies close to middle of the band gap and we, we multiply the product we got that is equal to Ni square and that is how we got the expression for Ni. So, let us come to that expression for Ni now I told you intrinsic carrier concentration in a semiconductor depends as Nc Nv square root exponential of minus band gap by 2 kbt. So, you see it depends on band gap right it depends also on this quantity and that quantity which is fine. Now, <coughs> for silicon it comes out to be around 1.5 into 10 to the power 10 per centimeter cube it is always normalized with volume. So, silicon has a band gap of 1.1 eV. What if if I take a material whose band gap is lower say material of germanium, germanium has a band gap of 0 0.68 eV which is lower than silicon. If your band gap becomes lower which means if this quantity becomes lower ok negative of the exponent no if it becomes lower then this quantity becomes higher right the whole thing becomes higher. So, basically what it means it means that lower band gap material if your band gap is lower gives you higher intrinsic carrier concentration ok and if this band gap is higher for example, if this band gap is higher right say for example, I take gallium nitride it is a semiconductor also there are many semiconductors its band gap is 3.4 eV which is much larger than silicon right. In that case your if your band gap is much higher then your Ni will be much lower ok. So, what implications does it have see there are different kinds of semiconductors silicon is one of the most widely used, but there is germanium there is gallium arsenide all your white light LEDs that you see in the market and you in your house those are made of gallium nitride. So, there are many semiconductors actually different semiconductors have different band gap and because of that different semiconductors also will have different intrinsic carrier concentration right. So, now this intrinsic carrier concentration is the minimum concentration that you will always have in a material and under any circumstance you cannot bring it down lower than this because this is thermally generated. So, if you take a semiconductor if you take a semiconductor for example, this is a semiconductor and I take one metal contact here I take another metal contact here and I apply a voltage right the current that I will get and imagine this is undoped this is intrinsic ok which means this is the purest form of semiconductor that you can get ok this is the purest form of semiconductor you can get then the lowest current you can get you cannot get lower than that ok the lowest current you can get depends on how many carriers are there and the intrinsic condition which is Ni which means that the lowest current you will get in this semiconductor under any circumstance will be limited by how many free carriers are there at any temperature say room temperature any other temperature without adding any impurity without doping it. So, if you are back this is the background carrier concentration this is the background carrier concentration this is default carrier concentration intrinsic carrier concentration you cannot decrease below that. So, if your carrier if intrinsic carrier concentration is higher then this current that you will get also will be higher and if your intrinsic carrier concentration is low then the current that you get also is low which means uh, you know a wider band gap semiconductor like gallium nitride with much higher wide band gap a large band gap which has much lower intrinsic carrier concentration will give you a much lower background current then compared to say silicon or germanium germanium will give even more whose band gap is smaller and that is why your Ni is higher that is why the background current also will be high. Is it a good thing or bad thing it depends on the application for example, this will manifest as a leakage current in a device like a photo detector or a transistor you know this there is something called a leakage current you know it is not a good current actually it is a leakage it is it leads to noise. So, that if you have a smaller band gap material like germanium then your leakage will be higher for example, germanium for germanium Ni is much higher I forgot the number exactly, but for germanium I think the Ni was almost because it is a lower band gap no it is almost like 10 to the power 14 per centimeter cube close to that ok. So, that is a very large number. So, what it means is that 
your lower band gap material like germanium for example will lead to inherently higher leakage current in devices so that is a very important technological you know statement actually because we design the devices based on the band gap so it's very important to have that so this is one thing that we learn from there okay now let's take things one by one slowly we let not rush things okay so let's get the concepts again much better here so for example i take a condition here so remember what i what are these ec and ev if you remember i'll be keep drawing i'll keep drawing this ec and ev very repeatedly now you remember that one to one equivalence ec and ev this is actually comes from ek diagram only this is except this is x in centimeter okay so this is this line basically represents the bottom of the conduction band in the ek diagram over position it is flat okay over position it is flat basically it's a constant band gap material like that that's what we mean okay uh, this is the and actually this is a valence band which is filled up right and this is a conduction band which is nearly empty so that thing actually comes but i don't represent this all i just give it a straight line that's it okay that's how we device engineers do that okay now if i suppose <coughs> tell you that i have nc of say 3 into 10 to the power 19 that is the number that is given okay nc is the conduction band effective density of states and i told you that i have doped the material you know i can add doping and i can increase or decrease i can increase the conductivity right i can tune the conductivity so external dopants are added no in a silicon for example phosphorus is a donor that will give electron i told you so the donor density is always represented by nd it means the density of it means the density of dopants that you are adding right or density of donors that you are adding okay how many donors you are adding okay and na represents to how many acceptors you are adding for p type doping okay density of acceptors i told you already if you recall that atoms like phosphorus which can give electrons like phosphorus or arsenic they give electrons to silicon they donate electrons that's why they are called donors and these are basically n type doping they lead to increase in electrons and acceptors like boron for example they are able to accept on electron and give a hole out so they actually are p type doping because they lead to higher holes okay so n a is the density of acceptor and n d is the density of donor okay so now i tell you for example if i take you a case i'll just redraw this case again so for example i have conduction band here i have valence band here okay and i tell you that you see n c is given to be 3 into 10 to the power 19 this is a at room temperature it changes with temperature by the way okay this is fixed number per centimeter cube and then i tell you that i have doped the material with phosphorus n type and d is equal to for example say 10 to the power 17 per centimeter cube okay 10 to the power 17 per centimeter cube that is the number of phosphorus atoms i have added so that is the number of electrons basically that i am getting extra so what is the position of the fermi level within the band gap the question is inside the band gap what is the position of the fermi level now because this is n type dope you immediately know that fermi level will be in the top half in this half region it will be there no but what is the exact position of the fermi level in other words what is the difference between the position of the fermi, fermi level will be somewhere here what is this ec minus ef can you do that that's an equation we have no i told you n is equal to nc exponential of ef minus ec by kt okay so here you see if i take this n by nc then i can take a log nature log here and that will become ef minus ec by kt i can bring the kt here actually so ef minus ec ef minus ec the negative of this gap is given by actually this quantity which is kt is 0 0.026 ev okay 0 0.026 that is the room temperature into log of n by nc i told you n is equal to n only right because that is the number of doping you have added and that is the number of electrons you are going to get so that will be 10 to the power 17 by 3 into 10 to the power 19 so you can take a log of this number no what will be this i don't have a calculator here but you can do log of 10 to the power 17 by 3 into 10 to the power 19 so this is like log of 1 by 300 only so some negative quantity will come of course it will be negative no this is ef minus ec ef minus ec will be negative because this is the gap so you can do that and you will find out some number so it might come out i don't know you have to do a calculator but maybe it comes out to be say 0. Point, um, say around uh, 2 ev maybe i don't know it may be wrong it may be 0. 0.3 also i'm just telling you so this will be 0. 0.2 ev right because they have negative of that right that's how you solve a problem like what is the position and if your position is given then you can back calculate and calculate this term nd right similar thing can be done for holes okay so that is an important thing now for example uh, 
Now, for the important thing is that I told you about NI. I already told you about intensive care concentration. I told you about this doping and how you know we can do this simple numerical. There are some conceptual questions that the textbooks do not talk about. So, while I am in the topic, I will tell you also those. There are some conceptual questions. Okay, you see this band gap that is there. <coughs> this within this band gap, actually, this is a forbidden gap. Okay, because see, this is a forbidden gap. Why do you know it's a forbidden gap? Because I told you this is actually filled with electrons and this is nearly empty, but you can get extra electrons here which can move. This is a forbidden gap, so carriers cannot exist within this band gap. Within this band gap, you cannot have carriers because this is forbidden gap. Suppose you have a Fermi level here, okay? Suppose you have a Fermi level here. The Fermi level tells you that there is a 50 percent chance of finding electron here at the Fermi level, if you recall Fermi Dirac. The question is if electrons and holes cannot exist within this band gap, it is a forbidden gap, okay. Then how come there is a 50 percent chance of finding the electron here? Does it mean there is a 50 percent chance of actually finding electron here? Right. The solution to that paradox is that Fermi level is only a statistical construct. It makes lives easier to understand many of this thing, okay. It is not a real level here. What it means is that of course, electrons cannot exist within the band gap. Within the band gap, electrons will not exist. But you are it means that there is a higher probability of finding electron here, you know, than a finding a hole here, for example. Okay, so it means that there is a 50 percent chance of finding here. It's a statistical construct that tells you how close you are to finding the electron in the conduction band. It's what is the probability here? So there is a higher probability you will find, a lower probability you will find hole and stuff like that. So it basically gives you a number as to what is the probability, and this probability itself will not tell you electrons will be there or not. I told you there is density of states also. You remember density of states. So, only density of states times the probability both has to be multiplied, both have to be multiplied only then you will get the number. Just because there are 50 percent probability here does not mean you will find an electron here because the density of states is 0 here, 0 multiplied by probability is 0. You need to have some density of states and density of states are only here. So, basically you have to multiply both together. So, one of them alone cannot tell you the 50 percent probability does not mean that there is an electron. Okay? It is a prob probability times the density of states that will give you the exact number of electrons, same with holes. Okay. So, this is one thing that may, may not people many may not tell you so much. Another thing that people <coughs> often do not tell you is that you see I we typically draw conduction band and then valence band. Of course, there is an intrinsic level at the middle okay, at the middle of the gap which is halfway through and suppose this is an n-type dope material or even p-type. So, n-type will be say Fermi level is here. right? See these are straight, these lines are very straight right. If you recall these lines are very straight right. Whenever there is a straight line what does it mean? It mean uh, actually it means that there is no field. Okay, I'll come to that very quickly now. You see the Fermi level here; it's straight. The Fermi level has to be flat. Fermi level has to be flat in equilibrium. What does it mean? It means there cannot be a slope in the Fermi level. Your Fermi level cannot have a slope. The moment you have a slope in Fermi level, it means current is flowing. So in equilibrium, when I say equilibrium, there is no current flowing your Fermi level has to be same because the probability of electron has to be same everywhere. If the Fermi level is tilting for example, I go back here I will go to a new page here maybe uh, you know suppose I have a conduction band here, valence band here and then I say that Fermi level is like this. This is not possible in equilibrium. This will mean it is non equilibrium. Why? Because, because you know a slope in the Fermi level this is a slope no a slope in the Fermi level implies that there is a current that is flowing and if current is flowing then it means there is non equilibrium. So, your Fermi level cannot have a slope okay? the Fermi level has to be straight that is one very important thing okay? in equilibrium of course, if it is not in equilibrium then Fermi level can have slope. Okay? So, please keep that in mind many of the textbooks do not tell you that. Okay? Another things that textbooks do not tell you is that if you have a conduction band and valence band that are flat. Fermi level may be here for the p type dope material maybe. If these are flat there is no slope right no slope this also has no slope right of course they are same band gap there is no slope. It means that what does it mean it means that there is no electric field in the material there is no electric field in the material okay? there is no electric field in the material because if there is a slope that means that the potential is changing basically and if the potential is changing then the field also will come right. 
because these energies are actually reflecting their potential only. So, a flat profile means that there is no field, okay, the absence of field that is what it means, okay. Because if you recall from high school, field is nothing but the negative of the slope of potential, you remember that it is a gradient of the potential and this e, this energy band diagram that I keep drawing this one no, this energy is actually energy of the electron, this E c, E v whatever we draw no energy bands, this energy bands actually represent the energy of electron, okay. this represent the energy of electrons and energy of electrons is given by you know what negative of, of the charge is there of course times v, v is the potential. So, potential times the negative of charge electron will give you the energy of the electron. So, essentially this will become 1 by q d e c by d x. So, the, if the bands are flat then the derivative of that is 0 no, so the field is 0. So, whenever there is a slope in the electric field uh, slope in the energy band for sorry then you know that there is an electric field. For example, if I have e c like that e v like that then that means there is a slope that means there is a field here ok. This can be or cannot be in equilibrium because I have not drawn the Fermi level here. I have not drawn the Fermi level here this is x here by the way ok. But this is slope means that there is a field whether equilibrium or not equilibrium is not our concern right now here ok. So, now let us take I am trying to solve some simple questions so that you know things become more and more clear. Uh, so, that is one important thing now suppose I have let us not Suppose I have silicon, two pieces of silicon, there is one piece here E C E V, exactly there is another one here, another piece of silicon E C E V. In one the Fermi level is here, in one the Fermi level is here, which has higher electron? Of course, this is higher electron because the Fermi level is closer to conduction when this also means that this is higher, higher electron, it may also means that this is higher doping. Okay. Now, suppose uh, now suppose what I will do is that this is x the x axis is distance you know that right this x axis is distance you know that right. Now, suppose I take a piece of semiconductor I, I take a piece of semiconductor this is a piece of semiconductor from this point say x equal to 0 this point and say the length of the semiconductor is say 1 micron 1 micron ok this is this from this side to that side ok from this side to that side I gradually I gradually increase the doping I gradually increase the doping n type doping what is happening x second doping the increasing the n type doping which means from this side I am increasing the doping n type doping gradually to this side I am doping it more and more. For example, at this side I have a doping of 10 to the power 16 per centimeter cube, I slowly keep increasing 2 into 10 to the power 3 as gradually I keep and here I become 10 to the power 17 per centimeter cube for example. So, that doping is gradually increasing from left to right. So, this part becomes more side doping, this part becomes less doping and gradually it is changing. It is in equilibrium which means there is no current flowing, how will it look like now, how will the energy band diagram look like? These are the concepts that textbook often do not tell you, how will the concept look like? So, for example, the band gap has remained same doping will not change the band gap right as at least the moderate doping you are talking about. If it is in equilibrium one thing that you know is that what your Fermi level will stay constant you agree. If your Fermi level stays constant that means I will first draw the Fermi level here. So, this is your Fermi level which has stayed constant ok sorry here. this is your Fermi level which is constant. Now, on the left side the doping is lower and the right side the doping is higher if you recall the E c minus E f this spacing E c minus E f this becomes smaller for higher doping and larger for smaller doping. So, on this side this is the left side right <coughs> x equal to 0 this is x equal to 1 micron at this side the doping is lower right. So, your E c minus E f will be at some position say here 10 to the power 16 kelly this is here this is E c, but now other side the doping has increased. So, your E c will be closer here then here right you agree the you know the E c will be closer there than here. So, what will happen is that your conduction band will band like this and your valence band of course, also will band like that because the band gap has to remain constant. If one bends the other has to bend otherwise the band gap will not remain constant no this spacing the gap will not remain constant. So, 
what it means? It means that Fermi level is here. Okay, sorry, Fermi level is here. It's a constant one line. I'm I'm very bad at drawing. This is Fermi level. Okay, E F, and your conduction band has been drifting like this, changing like that. Why? Because this position is far, so less doping. This is low, so the higher doping. Okay, so conduction band valence band will go like that. Now you see there is a slope. There is a slope in the conduction band, slope in the valence band. It means that there is a field. A slope in the conduction band means that there is a field for field experienced by electrons. Slope in the valence band means that there is a field experienced by holes. So of course, both electrons and holes now they are the same band gap. Of course, so uh, so electrons and holes will experience a field. Which way will the field be? Do you know? See, if there is a concentration gradient of see there is a ten to the power sixteen electrons here. There is ten to the power seventeen electrons here. Then there is a concentration gradient. You agree? So there are more things associated with this. Actually, we will come to that. It's called diffusion. If there is a concentration gradient of a species, then you will always the it always tries to go from the higher concentration area to the lower concentration area, right? If you spray deodorant in one corner of the room, the particles of the deodorant are highly concentrated in that corner, so it will diffuse to the corners where it is low. So the whole room will start after some smelling the deodorant after some time, right? So electrons also will try to diffuse from a higher region from here. It will try to diffuse from here, right? It will try to diffuse from here to this side. It will try to diffuse. Because electrons are higher concentration here, lower concentration here, but that will lead to a flow of current. No, if electrons move, so that current is balanced by this electric field that is there. Electric field will not allow that to happen. Okay, so I'll tell you a little bit more about electric field here before we go uh, to the next concept. So if your conduction band looks like that, this is your Fermi level. Okay, and then your valence band look like this. There's a slope here that I agree. Which direction is the electric field? Do you know? A very easy way to find out which direction the electric field is. I told you if there's a slope, there's an electric field. A very easy way to find out which direction electric field is is think of this, of this as a concrete floor, a slope like that, right? And you think of an electron here as like a Costco ball or a tennis ball. It will try to roll this side, no? Which means electrons will try to move in this direction because it's rolling in this direction, not diffusion. Okay? This is the Drift actually, this is rolling down, which means the field will be in this direction because electrons will move opposite to field. So that's how we quickly find out which direction is the electric field. Okay. Now this is a separate case. I'll come to this very quickly in some time. But you know, uh, this is a case that people do not talk about actually mostly in textbooks as to the field existence of field can be inferred from a slope in the band diagram. Fermi level has to be flat. If this Fermi level is as a slope, that means there is a current that is flowing. Okay. Uh, now. These are with doping, by the way, and doping is very essential to increase or decrease the number of electrons or holes, and that's how I, you know, we change the conductivity of the material by tuning the electron or hole density. If it is of course undoped, then Ni is that Ni that we talked about, and Ni expression has has been there. So Ni depends exponentially on band gap. It also depends exponentially on temperature, right? Now the question is, uh, there is something called a mass action law, actually, balance action in a way. So what happens is that, for example, I told you that for moderate doping, n is equal to n c e to the power e f minus e c by k t, right? And then you have uh, p equal to n v e to the power e v minus e f by k t, uh, right? And this is not intrinsic. Okay, this is not intrinsic. I'm talking about doped. I'm talking about doped material, for example, not intrinsic. Okay, not intrinsic. So if I multiply n and p, I get n c n v into e to the power uh, minus e c minus e v by k t, right? Which is nothing actually, but if I take a square root here, take a two here, then I can take a square here. This quantity is actually n i, n i. So the product of p and n will always be equal to n i square at equilibrium. This is a very fundamental rule. Okay, the product of p and n will always be equal to n i square. It's a rule. Okay, it's a fundamental rule. Under equilibrium, it will always be true. So what does it mean? It means that suppose I have a material, I have a semiconductor silicon, which is say n type doped, which say 10 to the power 17 per centimeter cube of electron. Doping. This is a donor atom, right? So this is donor doping, 
which means so many phosphorus atoms have been put actually or arsenic atoms have been put. So, so many electrons also we will get. So, the number of electrons actually is equal to this right. So, how many holes will be there? How many holes will be there? In this material how many holes will be there? Naturally holes will be lower in number no because I have added more electrons here donor will give electrons. So, this many number of electrons are there whatever number of dopants you have added that many number of electrons will be there that is what we are you know assuming till now that is ok. How many holes will be there? You know N i for silicon is 1.5 into 10 to the power 10 per centimeter cube and I told you this p into n will always be equal to n i square which means p will be equal to n i square by n which means that will be 1.5 will be how much this square will be how much 2.25 into 10 to the power 20 and n i n is n n is given to be this 10 to the power 17. So, p will be equal to 2.25 into 10 to the power 3 per centimeter cube you see the number of hole is 10 to the power 3 number of electrons is 10 to the power 17 so, a huge difference no. So, that is why it is called you know n type of semiconductor there are more electrons than holes, but see the number 10 to the power 17 electrons and 10 to the power 3 holes because there are so many so few holes this is called minority ok and this is called majority this is called majority ok electron doping. So, if you dope n type the electrons become majority and holes become minority you agree it becomes minority and that becomes majority ok. And similarly if you dope p type if I instead of this if I put a p type doping then the holes become majority and electrons become minority ok. So, uh, let us wrap up the lecture here today ok let us wrap up the lecture here today. Uh, we have discussed about doping we solve very fundamental simple problems of doping I told you few things that the textbooks generally do not tell you one is that your slope in the Fermi level means that the current is flowing it is non equilibrium. So, if a device or a material is in equilibrium Fermi level cannot have a slope it has to be straight it is all res with respect to position by the way and conduction band and valence band a slope in their profile means that there is a field I told you how that field comes right. So, if and that can be in equilibrium or may not be in equilibrium we do not know, but a slope in conduction and valence band definitely means that there are fields there ok. So, I told you about intrinsic air concentration how it depends on band gap how it also has a role in our devices because leakage current will be high or noise will be higher for a photo detector for example, made of a lower band gap material then compared to a higher band gap material because the intrinsic air concentration is the baseline the minimum carrier concentration that you will have you cannot go lower than that ok. And I told you that uh, you know just now I told you here that you know x, uh, your electrons and holes how you calculate the number if you are doping in n type then electrons are majority holes are minority and vice versa p into n will be always equal to n i square. So, if you know the n i you can always calculate p or n if the other value is given. I also told you that uh, you know if you dope it n type that dopant is called donor because it is donating electron and the p type dopant is called acceptor because it is accepting electron and giving you holes basically right. Uh, and I told you that if you add one phosphorus atom you get one electron that always need not be true you know need not hold true. So, those things we will come to in the next class the incomplete ionization ok the incomplete ionization and little bit more advance on this before we go to mobility and scattering which already I introduced in a briefly the diffusion thing I told you all those things will depend on mobility also the drift and diffusion ok. So, we will come to that but before that we will cover a few of the slightly more advanced things but with examples and numericals ok. So, that we will take up in the next class thank you.